What's going on everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we are going to add form validations and some UX for form validations to our new post form here. And we're gonna use this optimism gem um, from Least Bad over on GitHub. And it's essentially based on cable ready. It makes it really easy to add a reactive style um, form validations to our page. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. If you're following along with the series, this is technically part four in our building a blog with Rails 6 series. Um, if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link down in the description. You can follow along over on our website or just on the playlist on YouTube. With all of that said, I just wanna add, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're putting out new content every single day. So let's go ahead and jump in. To get started, let's go ahead and just add a couple of basic form validations to our post form. So we can open that up here and take a look at what fields we've got. So we have a title and a description. And I want to basically just open up my post model and say, um, well, let's add just a couple of things. So we'll say validates presence of, and then we'll say title and description. And then let's add a, a length uh, validation for the description. So we'll say validates uh, length of description. And then I'm just gonna say within and then give it a range of 50 to 250 characters. So if we look back at our form over here, um, we can see that our errors should essentially print out right here. Now all of the Rails forms, if you take away the local true, they are um, submitted with JavaScript by default and we want to actually redirect and show our errors here. So let's try this out and refresh and just click create post. And so we now we get this ugly three errors prohibited and it tells you all the different errors. So what we want to do is hook this up to our to the gem optimism and use that to print out the errors. So let's take a look at that. So we can look at the docs in a little more detail on this optimism.leasebad.com. And I'm just gonna go down here to quick start, actually set up, just kidding. And so let's just run through what we've got here. So I'm just gonna literally copy these over into my terminal and uh, we'll see where we end up. So we'll stop our server, bundle add optimism. This should run bundle install and add that to our gem file. And let's now add yarn add cable ready, which is going to actually set up cable ready on the JavaScript side. And then finally, let's run this rake optimism install. And then I think we should be good to go. So let's run our server again. And then now I think all we need to do is make a couple of small changes to the code. So in our form, let's go ahead and take away this local true. Let's delete all of these. And then inside of each one of these form groups, we're just gonna add a new item. So we'll say form.error for title, like that. And then we'll do the same thing for our description. All right, so the last thing that we need to do before this will work is open up our post controller. And then down here, if it fails to save, instead of rendering new, what we want to do is broadcast errors. And then we'll say um, at post and then give it the post params then we'll get rid of this render new here. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just copy this and put the same thing on edit and we'll try this out in just a second. Okay, so let's save that and then let's jump back over to the browser. So now if we try to click create post, let me refresh this here, click create post. And now you get this title can't be blank, description can't be blank. Okay, so let's try to make a couple of small changes to the way this looks. So I'm gonna to try to add a class of text danger here so that it's red and copy that and put it here. And let's give this a shot again. So let me just refresh and then we'll click create post. And now we get red text, which is great. So we'll enter some stuff here. 
and try to create and then we'll add something else here and hopefully it's going to give me it's too short so this is working pretty well so let me open up some lorem ipsum over here and just grab a random bit so we'll paste this here and then we'll get a little bit more and put it after and make sure all this is working as we want and so now you can see here that we've been redirected to our update which is right or our create or our excuse me our edit page which is what we set up for actually managing posts and now if we try to update it it's going to tell me it can't be blank if we try to put too much let's see it's going to tell me it exceeds the 250 limit and if we just replace all of it again we should be back to working so that's pretty slick and um, it's pretty easy to set up so we need to do one more thing because this warns us in the i think it's in the quick start maybe that we actually need to set up authentication. I don't remember where it is precisely, um, but anyway, you can read through all the docs, but there's an authentication section here which explains to us how we can hook this up so that everybody who's using your app doesn't receive all the broadcasts. So we do have current user, except for I believe ours is current author. So let me just double check that. So we have author here, so we'll have to tailor that, but um, there's an explanation for user-based authentication and then there's an explanation for device and so we can I believe um, copy all of this exactly so application controller um, so this is something we need to do so let's copy this exactly into our application controller and let's see here so set app set action cable identifier and so here, what we want to do is change this to be author and current author. And I'm just going to leave that how it is, and I believe that's right. Then let's do the same for our application cable connection. I think that's what we need to change down here. So we want to get all of this code and just go over into our connection file and we will just paste this in and then change everywhere where we have user to author so we'll find all and replace that and that should work and then next let's so we can skip this one because we just did that one here and then in our optimism channel, we just need to add this. And this is something that was automatically generated for us. So we'll stream for current author. So we'll open up optimism channel. And um, so what we need to do is just bump this in here, get rid of that, and save it. And actually make this current author. That'll give us some trouble. And then the last thing is we need to give Optimism the ability to broadcast updates. So we need to just copy this into our optimism.rb initializer. And maybe we don't even have one yet. Let me check down here in config, initializers. So we're going to create a new file, optimism.rb, paste this in. And I'm going to change this to the context.current author. Okay, so we'll, let, we'll need to restart our server and make sure we've saved all of this. Um, but let's restart our server and then give this a try. And let's jump back over to our browser and refresh. It's going to ask me to sign in again. Okay, so now let's try this again. So we'll just update. So it looks like that didn't work, and if we go over to our terminal and scroll up, we can find there was an exception, no method error, undefined method author for warden. And let's go look at where we did that. Um, so that is in the connection over here. And we tried to call dot author on this m of warden. Um, 
let's throw a binding dot pry right here um, or if you're using some other tool you can do that as well um, so let me just like try to update see if I hit this at all um, yeah so let's do env warden and let's see what we can call on it. So it wanted us to call dot warden dot user. So I think that's the method. It's probably warden doesn't actually adapt all the naming that we get with device. So we just need to call dot user there, I think. So I need to do exit program. Try that again. Let's just do control. D and then control C quit the server um, okay so let me get rid of that and then let's switch this over to be user and let's restart up the server again and I'm probably gonna have to sign in yet again so let's refresh here and then enter a password Okay, so now let's try this again. Let me go ahead and try to update. So now I get the error messages working again. So that looks good. Cool. So I think that's actually a much better UX and it's much smoother um, for handling form errors. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I think that's about it for now. Definitely encourage you to check out this gem. I think it's a really handy one to look at and have in your tool belt. Um, with all of that said, I think in the next episode, we've got uh, probably a couple more on this backend side where you're building out stuff for the authors or admin to use. And then we're going to move on to actually building out the front end of the blog. So anyway, um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you in the next one.